by Catherine Arden, Chapter 23. Brian and Coco sprinted up to her when she touched the ground, and she found herself locked in a breathless three-way hug full of questions. Ollie, what happened? asked Coco. The scarecrows just let us go, and then the two that were climbing the ladder fell back down again and turned to dust. We won, I think, said Ollie. The smiling man is gone. She was so... Loud, panting breaths came up out of the dark. Coco and Brian shrank back. The driver, the hound, lifted his great gray head and sniffed the three of them over. It's okay, said Ollie to Brian and Coco. He helped me. I asked him to bring you to the center of the maze. I was afraid you were lost. Brian scowled at the hound. He scared me half to death, he said. Coco was already reaching out to rub the hound's ears. To the hound, Ollie said, the smiling man said to call you and you'd come, but what's your name? I have none, said the hoarse, panting voice. Brian and Coco both jumped again, and that's his trick too. Then let's be traditional and call you Cerberus, even though you don't have three heads, said Ollie. The beast shook himself and looked pleased. Thanks, she said, she added. The bony ghosts of Beth and Kathy Webster stood beside two tall scarecrows dressed in old-fashioned black. To Beth, Ollie said, thanks for writing your book. I'm pretty sure it saved our lives. Beth looked pleased. I hope you will keep it. She sighed and looked up. From between the clouds overhead gleamed a single star. I am going on. Not alone, I hope, said Ollie. Beth took the hand of the taller of the scarecrows and smiled at him. For a second, it seemed the scarecrow was smiling back. No, not alone. The scarecrows fell to dust. The ghosts vanished. The last drops of what? So I'm going to pause for a second. because What does that mean just happened? Beth, the ghosts disappeared. Beth and Kathy are gone. But Beth was smiling and holding the hand of the taller of the two scarecrows. Who was that scarecrow? But Jonathan Scarecrow? And he turned to dust and vanished. She vanished. They're not alone. So wherever they went, they went together. The last drops of water were sprinkled on the last people. Ollie heard Mr. Easton sputtering. What on earth? As he heard Coco's soothing and creative explanation, she looked down at her watch, swung the compass around until the needle pointed to O. Let's go home, she said. No one get lost, okay? It took them until dawn to get out of the corn maze, which twisted in on itself again and again, like the Minotaur's labyrinth. They would have been lost without Ollie's watch. I don't understand, said Mr. Easton over and over. I don't understand. But he walked beside Ollie for a while and then went back with Brian to make sure no one was lost in the darkness and twisting stalks. The kids didn't talk much. They just walked, hanging on to each other, dull with shock. For most of the way, Seth's hound went with them, breathing deep breaths like the rushing of the sea in the darkness. Just at sunrise, they saw a gap where the corn ended.